What's happening guys? Chris Bonner here, Power Training TV. Yo, so I got a good question from a gentleman who basically explained to me that he's a JV basketball coach. What he tells me is he has these basketball players who are quote unquote awkward and gangly. And basically, you know, from his perspective is he doesn't really know what the foundation of weight training for them should be. You know, uh, it's one thing when you're taking these kids who, uh, who they're going through puberty, the testosterone's at an all-time high, they just hit that growth spurt. A lot of those kids in basketball, especially because they get this newfound height and they, oh, I guess I should play basketball. Um, they're usually awkward in their body, they kind of slouch down because of their posture, um, they don't walk around with confidence. There's a lot of things going on with this kid right here if you look at it from a holistic approach. Like I said, just on a physiological level, within their body, the hormones are raging, they're getting hair in funny places, Things are happening, the voice is cracking, and then outside they're dealing with a lot of different shit uh, with their, you know, you guys have gone through high school, 8 to, eight to about 10th grade. I mean, that's a time where you're really trying to figure yourself out, um, and they turn to weights. Now, when I was a kid, at, or at this time, the only thing that we could turn to, we couldn't turn to the internet like you guys. The only thing we really turned to was muscle magazines. I remember, I remember going to the grocery store and, you know, uh, looking through those magazines and what are they going to say? Three sets of 10 reps, everything. I think this is, we've, we've evolved from this and I think there's enough knowledge out there that uh, we can explain that, you know, athletes don't need to be training this particular way, especially in the beginning. I do believe there needs to be AI hypertrophy phase but I think that things need to become before this for them to set the tone for that foundation and really that's exactly what I did when I got uh, I had like a six inch growth spurt I believe in between ninth and tenth grade and I really didn't know what to do with it I was all lanky and long and I didn't really know you know what I mean I was I thought I was a great athlete before that and then that lankiness with that lankiness it came a little bit of uncoordination if you will for the first time in my life I was faced with that and that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking uh, this coach is experiencing um, what I wish I would have done differently knowing what I know now and training the athletes that I did was I would have liked to create a foundation of strength that they can build on. So let's say forget the weights for now, even obviously we're gonna evolve to load the athlete. Really what I think you need to focus on is two phases, and this is what I took and take, took from uh, the, my time I spent with that uh, trainer out there in Arizona. Um, he did a lot of body weight stuff and he preached a lot of isometric. Along with that, um, I was just talking with a, a, a buddy of mine who, uh, who's a pro strongman and he was explaining about some eccentric and it got me thinking, yeah, that's a lot of the same stuff I do with my athletes with their body weight. If you're familiar with my athletic calisthenics, I focus on a lot of tempo, so a lot of slow movements eccentrically, a lot of, uh, a lot of isometric holds. Instead of loading the back, uh, loading the, the bar with uh, weight and having them squat, can they hold a squat position? You know what I mean? Can they stand on one foot? You know, a lot of low level plyometrics. Um, these are things that are gonna create the foundation. We're not so much working the muscle here. If I can wrap your mind around, I'd say, you know, start getting those tendons, those ligaments a little bit stronger. You, you, does that make sense? So uh, a lot of um, uh, start them in a one-legged squat and have them decelerate down as slow as they possibly can. Or, or, or uh, even a, a bilateral squat. Um, just a lot of different things you could do. Take a push up and move slowly down. Have them control a perfect technique. Build that foundation because I promise you that even though it's boring, it's going to enhance their performance way more than you having them do three sets of 10 on the bench, three sets of 10 squat, three sets of 10 curls, three sets of 10 cable press downs, all that bullshit, I would throw that out the window. Get creative and see where they're at. Now on the other hand, I have a bone to pick with a lot of people who talk about plyometrics. A lot of people swear that you need to be 1.5 or 2 pounds, uh, you need to be able to squat 1.5 or 2 uh, times your body weight. Now, for, for you to be able to perform plyometrics, my bone to pick with that is if you go watch a basketball game, these kids are performing plyometrics in their actual sport. So why are we telling them in a controlled manner right, in training with a coach that you can't perform these plyometrics. If anything, I think it's the opposite. I think we want to be able to control them in a training manner properly and teach them how to absorb force and produce force properly, okay? So when you're colliding with that ground, why would I not want to teach them here? So anyway, just to, you know, kind of cut this off, um, 
first and foremost, I think you need sports specific plyometrics. You know what I mean? He should be learning how to go touch as if he's going for a rebound, repetitive jumps, um, whether he's cutting on cones, uh, and I'm obviously talking specifically for you uh, as a basketball coach. Um, I believe he needs to, uh, I believe he needs, they, they need to, um, to, to do a lot of cutting drills on that court. Um, you can design, you, pick off exactly what they're doing, if they're working offense, defense, whatever it is, and have them do some repetitive motions without the ball so they can focus more on intensity as opposed to skill. And then after that sport specific plyometrics, what I'm gonna be looking for is, I'm gonna be looking for a series of upper and lower body uh, isometric and eccentric movements. And then as they start to progress those for over a period of time, now we can load and still do isometric and eccentric. Really think about slowing down, think about being very meticulous. I know this is part of that phase where it's like really tough, but a lot of you dads out there who's got those kids, you know that you just, you, you wanna develop and you wanna do something good for them and spend time with them. That's the best kind of stuff that you could do. I remember kids, uh, dads out there trying to get them on weights and I remember certain kids out there from the hood, they would just sit there and do push-ups and squats and, and sit-ups all day long, and those kids turned out to be studs. So, I mean, that's just my take. There's never any right or wrong, but uh, for all you Bambies out there who, uh, who who are all awkward and gangly in your body, I hope this helps. I hope this helps for some of you JV coaches. I'll talk to you guys next time. Holler. I don't want to be an icon. Um, I want to be an idea. You know, I want to represent an idea. I want to so look, for a top speed exercise today, I wanted to share with you guys something that I think is such a simple tool you can utilize to correct a lot of your top speed. So often I talk about the mechanics of the lower body and cycling when you're in top speed. 